This video was brought to you by Bedroom Planner, Ken Power, Marcus Beal, and Stolenberg. Yo, what's up? We are now at Nebenes Supercharger, and behind me here you see Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus from China. So, man, I've been waiting for this for a long time. We're going to do range tests today and also some charging tests. But at least you will see the range tests in this video. Charging tests will be analyzed in another episode. But Okay, so this one looks just exactly the same as the other cars. There is really no difference when you look at it from outside. Oh yeah, we have to check something. Tires, Michelin Pilot Sport 4. Um, where's that? There, 235, 45, 18. And same for the rear, Pilot Sport 4, 235, 45, 18. With the wheel caps, hub caps, whatever you call them. So um, the car is uh, pretty stock. The only modification is that it has rear, these, these two rear windows here on the other side is tinted, but not the, the, the glass here. So I don't count that as too serious modification. Okay, and one more thing that could improve it slightly is we have now this one here. Yeah, but on the other hand, cooling down a a black car takes supposedly slightly more energy than cooling down a white car and many people they go for white model 3s because the, the white color is included whereas the black one is extra so i think it's pretty fair to test this car and i just topped up a little bit now because today we have to do the high speed test first because it's one in the afternoon and we have low traffic uh, and if you look here and timing wise, that's actually better. But okay, it's kind of hard to see here. There. So you see the battery temperature is at 35 degrees now, there. So that's also a nice and okay temperature. So yes, we will just do the final preparations and then off we go. So the plan is to drive one loop only. We, we don't need to measure the full uh, run yet. We will do that in the low speed test. So right now only we have to just drive there and back in. We do drive off a long enough distance to get some variation. Uh, and any initial spikes will be even out. So a round trip there will be 167 kilometers. All right, we start by checking the weight. Front axle, 920. The whole car, 1840. Whoa, that's it. 1840 the american car is 1720 so this is only 120 kilos heavier not too bad oh yeah i'm hugging the left lane right now look at that okay windsock uh Mjösen is a little bit windy we have um, okay we have some tailwind today i'm i'm purposely hugging the left lane right now because we have fresh asphalt over here mm, 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 mm. nice weather 22 degrees celsius pretty good driving conditions today man I have to say that this car feels more quiet than the regular model 3 okay the the asphalt over here is quite rough but you see if I change lane it's then not that noisy and if I go off center a little bit to simulate more typical uh, asphalt in the rest of Europe because Norway has particularly noisy tarmac because we we allow studded tires so they have to use a slightly different compound on the on the asphalt over here uh, and that becomes noisy after a couple of years of driving but my impression is that the made in china model 3 is more quiet that was the first thing i noticed and other people also noticed that even in the live stream they noticed that uh, it was different so uh, i guess i have to test it uh, properly uh, it could just be a placebo effect, I don't know, but it feels like... See, what about tunnels? Okay, in tunnels, they, it's still kind of noisy, but it seems like Tesla has improved the, the soundproofing against the surf... I mean, against the road noise. That is my my impression of it. Yeah. So we'll see. Hang on, let me see. Get, let's get out of the tunnel again. There. Yeah, yeah. You know what? The, the noise sounds like, how do I put this? 
it sounds more German. It, I mean, there's still noise, of course, but it's more. They they seem to have uh, blocked some of the higher frequencies so that uh, you hear more of the lower frequencies, which is more pleasant to listen to. And that's usually how the German cars are also. So this is wow. I mean, if I compare this car, the 2021 Model 3, with the one I used to have, uh, 2019 Model 3 from Fremont uh, MC Hammer, then the MC Hammer, my claim is that it was noisier. But again, by the end of the day, we have to test it on the same stretch with a measuring instrument and see what it is really. But really, um, ever since I owned the Model 3 back in 2019, my biggest uh, downside with the Model 3 was that it, it was noisy compared to uh, the Model X and the Model S I had. So uh, yeah, hmm. so far so good. All right, we are now getting close to Nebenes again. I need to check the distance. It's supposed to be 167 kilometers under the bridge. Oh, it's 166.5. So actually the distance on the test, this Tesla is spot on. Yeah, 166.7, that's it. We don't have to correct for anything now. Okay, that's good, okay. Now we just take one extra loop and then we go back to Nebenes. We are back at the starting point and look at this. 166 watt hour per kilometer. What the heck, man? <laughs> this is even lower than the American car. It's 23 degrees Celsius outside. I don't know why the consumption is lower. Uh, the tire pressure is also normal. So nothing there. But uh, I mean, was it the tinting? I don't think so. We also had this, this cover here. So I don't know really why, but <laughs> this is really good. Consumption. I don't know the capacity yet, so I, I don't know the, the range, but I will figure it out on the second test. But I will show you something here. If you look, well, is it better to, yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, so you see here, it's got my Tesla. You see that uh, we have 186 kilowatt of power output, available power at 8%. That's crazy, man. It seems like we might have more power when the state of charge is low. So this car didn't feel that sluggish with 8%. That needs to be tested once I do the, the acceleration test. And another thing I noticed is that the voltage here is 344. And when the car was fully charged, it was 360 something, if I remember correctly. This is a property with the LFP is that voltage is quite flat and linear. Uh, whereas uh, the regular car, the other cars, with other batteries, they will be ranging from 400 volt down to around 330, quite a big span. And the, and the last thing I mentioned, I noticed is that usually when I drive every all those other type of batteries low, um, the temperature in the pack will rise. Here it stays cool still, 32. The other packs will be close to 40 by now. And usually what happens with the other types of uh, other chemistry, the NCA, is that uh, the voltage drops to a point where, where it has to output higher current to compensate for it or something. Or, I don't know. And then people say that the LFP batteries has also lower internal resistance. This sounds like really good properties, man. So now we're going to start charging uh, all the way to 100% and then we do the 90 test and then we measure the capacity. Okay, start charging. Uh, wrapping up, uh, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 9900. Oh, wow, good shit, man. I went to the gas station, grabbed some food, came back, I have 54%. <laughs> and I see immediately that the charging curve here is way more flatter than the, the American uh, battery because on the, the other one at 54%, we'll be getting only 60 kilowatt. So we were getting 100 kilowatt up until around 50%. So this is looking really good. I need to record uh, a charging session at V3 Supercharger tonight. But wow, this uh, LFP battery is getting more and more impressive now. And you remember, guys, this is only around 60 kilowatt hours. So we are charging at 1.5 C at 55%. But supposedly this LFP can take it. <laughs> um, okay, we are about to 
I mean, it's gonna finish in not too long. <laughs> this is weird because normally when I charge other batteries, not only Tesla, but many batteries without uh, top buffer, they need a long time to go to 100%. But here it's gonna take 15 minutes. And look, at 96% it's taking 25 kilowatt. LFP for the win. And another thing I noticed is that, you see here, the battery has been steadily staying at around 46 to 48 degrees only. So it doesn't go to 55 like the other type of battery. So man, I'm, I'm starting to like the LFP more and more now. <laughs> All right, so we are on the move now. We have to cruise at 92 kilometers per hour, but look at that consumption. 112 watt hour per kilometer. Well, we have some downhills and we have some tailwind, but I think it's time to say, Ionic, go home. <laughs> We're getting close to Stange and we've been driving for a little over an hour. And the consumption right now is 122, but uh, yes, it should go up now because of headwind. But let me just show you that right now it is 26 degrees outside. So uh, this is a very good uh, driving condition. Yeah. And um, it's now, uh, it's Thursday afternoon, five in the afternoon. But over here though, it's nice and quiet. Wow, we are back at Nebenes. This took four hours and 24 minutes. And look at that consumption, 122 watt hour per kilometer. <laughs> On the previous run I did with the American car, it was 128. I don't know why this one has lower consumption. Temperature was perfect today, 23 degrees Celsius. Maybe we have a lower air pressure today in, in on the air, you know, not, 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 I can show you here the tire pressure. Nothing special there, um, but okay. And then I will show you something I, I mean, just observe here that we have 3% left. Max discharge power is still 184. I noticed that the car is still nice and snappy. Uh, and here we have 1.5 kilowatt hour left, but uh, the car claims that it has another seven kilowatt hour. So people in the live stream uh, mentioned that maybe Tesla hasn't tested this enough in winter. So maybe Tesla has a big enough buffer in case, let's say in winter, uh, and the battery is cold, then it might be pretty bad for the car. So maybe that's why it has a pretty big buff buffer, but maybe in summer you can spend it. So we don't know. But I guess I will do another test to test, to discharge it until the car stops to see how many kilowatt hours we get out of it. But based on the information here, it's actually quite likely that we will get at least five more kilowatt hour from it. <laughs> but you kind of need to know what you're doing. If you don't have this, then you are pretty much in the dark if you drive below zero here. So I don't recommend driving this made in China car below zero if you, like, if you know, don't know what you're doing. But let me crunch some numbers here. All right, I did the math now. And if we simplify things, uh, we can get 49.8 kilowatt hours. And that's actually one kilowatt hour less than the American car. Uh, but then on the low speed, you see we get 400 kilometers. And then in the high speed run, we get 300 kilometers of range. So this means that the made in China car is on par with the American car when it comes to range, battery efficiency, but you actually have lower, uh, uh, like you have a better low state of charge performance. So that's something I'm going to test in an, a dedicated 90 to 10% acceleration test. And I'll also be doing noise tests because I get the impression that this one is quite, uh, it's quiet, but really impressive how, in, how efficient this car is. I still don't understand why it is so efficient compared to the other one, but I think it's just weather condition really. I mean, we can probably also get the same result with the American car if we did it today. Yeah. But okay, so interesting. Uh, so actually, if you're wondering about buying this car and you're not sure, uh, from what I've seen now with the charging speed, it has a fairly nice and flat charging curve. It charges way faster than the, the other standard range plus with the other, other the different type of battery. So it's just really nice. I highly recommend this car already from what I've seen so far. And then we will see again uh, for the rest of the test. So that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.